We now know that the Earth and the planets of our solar system are not alone in the universe. Over the past few decades, the hunt for extrasolar planets has yielded incredible discoveries, and now planetary researchers have a new tool, simulated models of how planets are born. It's believed that most planets form when a molecular cloud collapses into a young star. The leftover gas and dust form a disk around the star, and the particulates inside the disk begin to collide and coalesce over millions of years, forming larger and larger objects until a planet eventually takes shape. Sally Dotson Robinson and her team of researchers at the University of Texas at Austin are modeling and simulating these protostellar disks comparing the results to the Earth and the planets of our own solar system. Any young star that's, you know, a few million years old or less is surrounded by one of these disks, and it's like a frisbee of gas and dust surrounding the star. And that's the environment where planets form. So we want to know what conditions are good for forming planets, what conditions are bad for forming planets, etc. So Getting really good detailed models of how these disks work is important. The evolution of this disk uh, greatly impacts the uh, way planets could be forming, uh, and that's, so that's what we're simulating. Uh, we're trying to simulate the global evolution of the disk uh, over its entire lifetime. The simulations model important factors, such as turbulence and temperature of the disk, which affect how and where planets form. In a disk that's too turbulent, the particles move too fast and bounce off each other. Less turbulence means a greater chance for them to collide and stick together. The temperature of the disk determines where ice forms, a phenomenon called the ice line. Ice is a good ingredient for giant planets. You don't really need it for, for Earth-like planets, for terrestrial planets, but for giant planets, we think that you probably do need it. So this, our simulations will tell you, well, where do you expect there to be giant planets forming and where do you expect there to be small planets forming? It was believed that the disk would cool off as it expands and the ice line would move closer to the star, making it possible for giant planets to form. But the models showed that the opposite was true. The disk heats up as it expands and the ice line moves further away. Future theories of planet formations can now consider this discovery, which marked a shift in their basic understanding of disks. Discoveries like this are a result of the complexity of the models and simulations, which cover a timescale of millions of years. The considerable computation involved was facilitated by the Ranger supercomputer at the Texas Advanced Computing Center. But accurate, two-dimensional models were just the beginning. Sally and Russell had recently taken their work a step further, collaborating with Greg Abram of TACC in order to create three-dimensional models of their data. Really, the, the, the challenge becomes figuring out uh, not what their data is, but what they want to convey from their data, and how they can best convey that using visualization techniques. You know, with these 3D renderings, we're able to see, you know, these are the correct proportions. This is what it really looks like. We're moving toward like, a better understanding of what this disk would actually look like if you were to fly over it. It's a way of looking at the problem before that I never thought about, which is like, how can you use your eyes to get information about this disk and what can you leave, what can you cut out, and if you cut it out, are you telling the right story, you know, so it's kind of fun. You know, TAC is incredibly well administered, so setting everything up was just easy. It was like, you know, boom, we were going. We do try to teach people to fish rather than give them fish, so uh, we have courses here that we uh, teach at TAC which we hope enable people to do as much of their own visualization as possible. He definitely made it look very easy, uh, and he's written a lot of the, uh, the code that would take the data and turn it into a fashion that can be easily visualized. Uh, and taking that forward, uh, it seems like it would be um, very doable to then start producing um, my own visualizations of the data. In 1988, we knew of one solitary extrasolar planet. In 2012, we know of almost 2,400 awaiting confirmation. Understanding the conditions that are most favorable for planet formation will aid researchers like Sally Dotson Robinson in discovering more of them and can also provide greater understanding of the evolution of Earth and our own solar system. I love making new discoveries, so um, sometimes 
I do it observationally, sometimes computationally, but either way, it's really exciting. I mean, to see something we haven't seen before, realize that's important, that's a neat experience, so that's my favorite thing.